So the Springboks are out for their first game of the Rugby Championship. They're going away to Australia for two games, which will be very tough, of course. I think Australia are going to be nicely organised under Joe Smith for sure, but I don't think they're a particularly special side. I think they've got a bit of a ceiling, and I see a lot of special in this Springboks squad. So if they get this right, I think the Springboks are winning both of these, but that first game is going to be massive for sure. Up front, it's going to be huge, but I do think South Africa have it if they get it right on the day. The team I am very excited about, even though it is very similar to the team we saw in those July tests um, against Ireland, it is essentially having two big changes that I think make a big difference. Maybe not right now, but certainly in the future, I think these changes could be long term, actually. So let's get straight to the headline inclusion. The first start at fly half not 15 or anywhere else, Sasha Feinberg Mgomazulu is starting at 10 and he is special. It's not that Andre Pollard is over the hill yet. He still has plenty to offer. I think they're saying this is the chance to give him a couple of games. I expect him to have both games at 10 actually to see what he can do as the heir apparent to Andre Pollard because reminder that uh, Leibok is in this side and he will be gutted and it is a signal I think to say to Leibok you're a good player but we think uh, Feinberg Mugomazulu is better and I think that is the case he is special Libok can be decent very exciting but I think it is a sign to say he has jumped him in that pecking order it's not just a giving him some experience sort of thing let me know if you disagree I get very excited when I see players like that I thought I saw it for England a long time ago when we had Danny Cipriani play for the first time I saw him I think he was 19 playing in the sevens and he was unbelievable I thought he had absolutely everything until we found out he didn't really like tackling and had a few attitudinal issues shall we say so these players are very rare I think he could be one of them and again, I don't think it's saying he is number one at the moment. I think it is saying he is number two. And here's your chance to get that big experience and to show it from the start. So super excited to see him play. And even if it goes terribly, you've still got Pollard on the bench. So that is the headline. The second big story is at number eight. And I've been talking about number eight being a point of not so much weakness for South Africa, but they are trying to find the next big number eight. Big in inverted commas, of course, because Quagga Smith has had a go and he is a very good player. He's on the bench. Classic 6-2 bench, of course. Van Standen probably covering open side. Uh, ben Jason Dixon covering blind side. So they've got a full back row replacement on the bench. But the big news is Elric Lowe starts at eight. And I think it's a really good call. He's 24 years old. You know, he's been in and around the squad, playing for Vodacom Balls, very, you know, consistent, but he has a big ceiling, I'd say. He's got a big frame, nearly as tall as a second row. He's pretty quick. I think he's got better handling than Evan Russe, who is another guy who I think this signal is. We think, Evan Russe, you are good. You are, you know, straight up and down, really hard as nails, but are you special? Are you the future? We're not sure. Maybe Elbrick Lowe is the future again he could have a couple of games we do have Jasper Visa in the squad who is probably the starter at the moment but again I say Jasper Visa is solid he's straight up and down can be a bit of a penalty machine is he that huge number eight that big special player they need maybe not and maybe Elric Lowe is the guy I think he's got some really good hands some good flicks on him as well has that big size I think maybe he needs to carry a little bit lower possibly we'll see if Australia can get underneath him a little bit Maybe he can put on even more size because he's got that big frame, but 24 years old, a perfect time to give him a start. He is flanked by two very experienced players in Khaleesi and Peter Steff de Toy, who of course are their starters. But again, looking forward a couple of years towards a World Cup, is Khaleesi going to be there? Probably not. Is Peter Steff de Toy going to be there? Maybe, maybe not. So they will need to reshape their back row as it goes on through the years. And Elric Lowe has a big chance here, maybe two games in a row, like Feinberg Mugomazulu, to make a statement. So they're looking for special, and those two players could be that special to take this established team just to that next level. Because I did say in those July tests that they could take their play to a next level with a little bit more intricacy, a bit more passing, a little bit more deception in their forward pods maybe, and they could be absolutely unbelievable. Vili LaRue is key to that. He is starting at 15. Fassi is tempting because he's so quick, so exciting, you know, big under the high ball, that sort of thing. But LaRue gives that width of pass, that extra kicker that can really make this back line pop because, of course, 
Colby and Arenza are their best wingers, but you've got to feed them. You've got to give them the ball. Sure, they can do something from nothing, but you don't want to rely on that. Diolandi and Creel are their number one centre partnership, although Am is coming back to fitness, and he's definitely going to push Creel hard, so that'll be interesting to see. He's not on the bench at the moment. They've only got two on the bench, of course, with 6-2. Uh, Grant Williams can cover wing as well. Andre Pollard could cover 15 if they needed to. So there may be a little light on options there, but Pollard could come on at 10 and Feinberg Magomazulu could go to the centres or into fullback as well. So they've got some options there, of course. At nine, it does sound like there's a little niggle for De Klerk, so he's not starting, but I'm not sure on him anyway as their number one. Uh, Reinach is an experienced player. The excitement of Grant Williams coming off the bench, I still think there's a bit of a fight to go on there for the starting scrum half slot, but Reinach gets the crack. He's, you know, he's a great player. Loved him, of course, when he came over to England and played for Northampton Saints. I thought he was amazing then, getting on a little bit now, but still a brilliant player. And then the front five is super strong, of course. Unche Unbanabi, Malherba, incredibly strong scrummagers. Of course, the bomb squad's amazing. We've got Marks, Steenkamp and Koch to come on, and they don't even need Thomas de Toy, who would start for most other sides, definitely start for England, as I've said before. The second row looks great on paper with Etzebeth and Snayman starting, but Snayman maybe has got a bit of a knock. They don't have an out-and-out -out second row on the bench, and maybe Dixon goes there, maybe Lowe goes there. Let me know what you think would happen if one of those players has has to go off they could well play pretty much the whole game that'll be interesting but maybe a little bit lighter on depth in second row than they would like but like I said on the bench it's that 6-2 split with a whole back row if they want to bring them on a back row of Dixon Van Staden and Quagga Smith so I think this team could be very very good I think they should be too good for Australia I think Australia will be a great team but I don't see the special players that I see in this Springbok squad so super excited to see Feinberg Magomazulu go very interested to see how Elric Lowe goes at eight big chances for them to make a massive statement to say we are players to either start or be in the 23 all the time let me know what you think down below if you like these sorts of videos do like do subscribe that would be awesome and I'll catch you next time.